In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can go from being a full-time freelance video editor to a six-figure creative agency owner in just a few simple steps. Now, this is something that I've been able to do myself a few years ago, and I've helped over a dozen people do the same thing as well since then. Now, there is no right or wrong way to go about this. I have to clarify that. I'm just going to be sharing with you what worked for me personally and what I've observed works well for most people that I've worked with in our coaching business. So I really hope you are going to find this insightful and let's jump right into it. So step number one for most freelance video editors is going to be actually raising your prices and your quality as well. The thing is, you have to realize that if you don't have at least 60 to 70% gross margin, meaning profits, uh, you know, after just outsourcing the editing part of your service, you will have a hard time scaling up an agency because you will just have more and more things coming off of your margin. These are going to be things like, you know, payment processing fees. After that, if you have assistants or people who are lead scraping for you and then creative directors, all of these people's salaries and, you know, commission and everything is just going to be coming off of your bottom line. So you have to realize if you start at, let's say, 30% profits after you outsource the editing to someone else, then you will be left with basically nothing by the time you scale up to multiple six figures a year, which is probably not what you want to do. Uh, because at that point you would be working for the same amount of money you're probably making right now. Yes, you could say I run a six figure business, but at the end of the day, the only thing that actually matters is the profit that you keep with these type of cash flow businesses. So again, what I would recommend you to aim for at least 60 to 70% profit margin once you outsource the editing and get your pricing up to that point. So for example, you know, a 75% gross profit margin after outsourcing would mean if you charge $400 uh, per video for a client, Client, you would pay your editor, you know, a hundred dollars, or maybe if it's a little bit lower margin than like 150, right? But that's kind of the ratio I would recommend going for. You might not agree with this, but that's what I've seen, you know, work sustainably over the long term and even once you scale up. Now, if you're actually wondering about how you can go about raising those prices, then I've actually made an in-depth video breaking down the three key components that go into charging higher ticket prices. So make sure to go and watch that as well. After this video, I will link it in the description below. Then step number two is going to be scouting and hiring editors. You will want to interview at least 20 to 30 candidates, in my opinion, to actually find a couple really good ones. And some of the key traits that I'm looking for when it comes to hiring editors is number one their response times also how responsive are they to feedback so how quickly can they actually make changes to the video and how accurately they can make those changes once they get some feedback on how that you want the footage and the videos to turn out and overall just their character and the kind of culture fit they are so to say for the company i always like to you know even go a little bit into their life outside of work and outside of editing just to get an idea about what they are like as a person my rule of thumb is if i cannot hold a 30 minute conversation with them without feeling like oh i don't want to be you know friends with this guy i probably won't hire them because even though yes your you know employees or people you work with are not your friends in my opinion to have a great company culture they still need to be on a similar mindset and wavelength as you in terms of where you can find these editors there's a bunch of places to go for but you can find them on twitter or now it's called x facebook groups even upwork or other freelancing sites like that and even video editing groups are a decent option you will have to go through a lot of people generally speaking to find a gem and it is just what it is if you think about it it makes sense that it's hard to find great editors who work at a price as well that works for you to scale an agency because it's literally the main thing you are selling as a agency owner right you are basically selling the labor of the people who work for you so it makes sense that it's really hard to find those people who are worth working with because otherwise if it would be super easy to find those amazing editors who are also great people and deliver everything on time then your clients wouldn't need your services as an agency owner and then once i found you know the best candidates what i like to do is have them do a quick short test footage just to see their skills first and then after that you can do a full-on test video see how they respond again to feedback and then you will choose the best person or the best couple people out of the big pool that you already narrowed down 
down to just a few best candidates. And step number three is going to be transitioning out of the service delivery. And instead of working in the business, delivering the videos for your clients, you're going to start working on the business. The big difference between those two is that when you're working in the business, you're not actively doing really anything to grow it. You are just doing what's required. You're just doing what the clients uh, need you to do, right? But when you are actually working on the business, you are building out structures so that you can scale. You're building out backend systems. You are finding new clients. You are doing sales activities. You are creating content. You are starting to build your own personal brand as well. So you build more authority, right? So you will want to be shifting your focus from just being being in the service delivery every single day, having to do, you know, the delivery to actually working on the business instead. And that's what's going to unlock the real growth for you. First thing you should outsource, in my opinion, is going to be editing when it comes to building an editing agency, because it's what takes up most of your time in the beginning. And then after that, you can go later on into also uh, appointment setting and uh, managing as well. Now, a lot of people are really afraid of outsourcing editing and letting go of control, but you have have to realize it is something that you must do if you want to actually build this type of business and if you cannot make that move then this might not be for you because it's better to keep 60 percent of a project that you didn't really have to work on or spend much time on than to keep a hundred percent of something that you had to deliver and spend all your time on doing because then you have leverage if you are editing all the videos yourself you know your only leverage is your price point and how much you can charge but you can only raise that so far as an editor Whereas if you have other people working for you as well, you have now leverage on their time and then you can just keep getting more and more clients and scaling up the team to support those client needs. All right, now step number four is going to be getting consistent at setting sales appointments. You have to realize that if you want to build a team of actually amazing editors and actually amazing team members, you will need to be able to provide them a lot of work, right? Nobody who's an amazing editor wants to work with an agency that's giving them very infrequent work one month they make 500 euros the other month they make you know 2000 no great editor wants that what they want if they are going to work for an agency and not freelance is they want consistency they want stability so for you to be able to provide that to them you need to get very consistent with setting sales appointments in your calendar and closing new deals every single month now this is a really difficult task for most people and it takes quite a long time to crack this because there's a lot that goes into it right a lot for example your offer creation skills your actual outreach skills your uh, prospecting skills your follow-up skills all of these different things even your sales skills they go into this together so it's not like oh i'm just gonna learn how to set appointments no you need to learn a lot of sub skills within that which can take some time and especially if you don't have the right guidance it's kind of difficult to figure this out on your own for me it took over half a year to get consistent with setting appointments on my own but again, if you want to have those consistent new clients every single month, you need to be able to set appointments from inbound, outbound and referrals as well. So inbound marketing is when you are putting out your own content on X or Instagram or YouTube and you are attracting your ideal clients through the content that you produce right now in the beginning i look at inbound and just building your brand as just a support mechanism to support your outreach because outbound is a lot more controllable in the short term right when you're doing outbound you're doing cold emails you're doing cold messages on x you're doing sending loom videos whatever method it is that you are using and there it's literally an inputs and outputs game it's a numbers game that's all right you need to know your uh, kpis what are the key performance indicators that you you are aiming for the targets that you have for your open rates your num number of daily messages sent your reply rates your booking rates and your show up rates your closing rates right you need to know your numbers and you just need to do enough volume so that you're booking the amount that you need and the reason why i like to look at content first as a support mechanism for that is because if you have great content if you have a great personal brand your outbound your outreach is going to convert way better as well so in my opinion you want to start with both first just put the main focus on outreach and also referrals are great which is when your client recommends you to another person that means you've done a great service delivery so you know you can set up uh 
client's referral program so that they have an incentive to recommend you. That's more so just a passive thing. You just set it up once and then you can forget about it. But you want to start with main focus on outreach first, in my opinion, and then also start with content already so that it can support your outreach and make it more effective. And then eventually over time, you will get to a point where you will start getting just more and more clients from the inbound side of things as well. Now, once you have done these manual outreach methods yourself, you've done the manual scraping, you've set appointments through Loom videos or emails, whatever it is, right? And you've learned how to do it. Then the next person you will probably want to hire is someone who can help you with that. So first you will probably want to outsource the lead scraping, pay someone to find the leads for you so you don't have to spend all that time. And then you will eventually want to outsource the actual outreach part of it as well so that you can just be the one who's taking these sales calls, but you don't have to spend that much time every single day on doing them manually. And you will be able to focus more on just the content side of things, team management and taking sales meetings. And then the fifth step is going to be scaling your team. So you are going to always need more editors, graphic designers, appointment setters. You will even need a creative director or a manager. And this business is really as just about like getting more clients in through the pipeline and then expanding the team to be able to support all of those new clients without the quality of the service dropping. And this is a fine balance that you always kind of need to just keep an eye on. And it's really, you know, not, not a passive thing. Like I don't want to sell you this idea that, oh, once you build a creative agency, it's going to be a fully passive thing unless you build it out to be a super large company doing millions a year where you have maybe a CEO in place. Well, the, yeah, maybe then it can be pretty passive for you, but otherwise you'll always be still uh, looking to hire new people or, or manage people, right? And and it is a much more leveraged way of making money in the creative space than just being an editor, but it's not going to be something where you never have to work. Even as a you know owner, you will probably have to do around two hours, three hours of work to maintain uh, the clients, let's say when you have 20 clients every single month. Now, managing your time and your focus is key through throughout this entire process, right? So there is generally speaking around 20% of tasks that you are doing that are bringing in 80% of the results. And the key here is to be able to at every single month identify what were the key 20% of things that you've done that got you most of the results and then try to always outsource and get rid of doing all those tasks that you still have to do, which aren't bringing you as many benefits. So you want to just continually buy back your time and energy. Another thing I want to highlight here is as you will no longer have to be doing the service delivery yourself at this point, you will really need to master yourself and your self-discipline because otherwise it's very easy to get lazy when you all you have to do is maybe just make sure that the videos go out on time or just, you know, if you have a creative manager even, then just kind of like, you know, make sure everything is, everybody's doing their jobs. It's very easy to get lazy when the business doesn't require as much input from you. You no longer have these hard deadlines from your client side. So you will want to probably get into, you know, more uh, sports or something like that, which can teach you discipline even outside of work. And that will translate into your work life as well. So you can keep scaling. A lot of creative agency owners get stuck in the 10 to 30 K a month range. And the reason why is because they don't know how to manage themselves as a person. And so they are the main bottleneck of their business. So you don't want to be that guy. There is so much more potential as well to go in this business model. And last but not least, a uh, key thing I wanted to mention is that you want to be setting targets always for everything. So set targets for the outreach numbers, the amount of calls you set, the amount of clients you take on every month, the amount of editors you'll hire and so on. And you can then uh, set even yearly targets, quarterly targets, monthly targets, and you want to be breaking it down to small daily activities and small chunk size pieces of work. So that way it's going to be a lot more digestible and your brain will actually be able to complete those smaller tasks. That's how you achieve amazing and big goals. If you have a big goal, but you break it down into small bite-sized pieces. Now, if you want help with this whole process, and if you are already a full-time video editor, again, you should be doing at least two to three K a month already for you to even be eligible for this, uh, right? But we have a program called Grow Creatives where this is exactly the process that we help people go through. We help them make this big transition 
and do it as quickly and as smoothly as humanly possible. So if you would be interested in that or you want to see some of our success stories, just click the first link in the description below. Check out our website, book in a call, talk to me and my team, and we will see whether that would be a good fit for you. For everybody else who's not there yet, enjoy the journey, right? Make sure you are putting your head down and getting everything done. And I really hope you found this video insightful. You know, again, as someone who's been through this process and helped a bunch of other people grow through it as well, I know it's a very overwhelming process and it can be very difficult in the moment, but trust me, if you just do it, you just stay, stay disciplined and you do this business model for one year, two year, even three years, you will look back and realize how fast the time passed by and how far you've been able to go. So hope you enjoy this again and I will see you in the next one.